Well, hey there, I wanna say welcome to you. We are so glad to have you joining us for this session of Traveling Light. And uh, we're excited to be here today. And, and so I am joined here by some wonderful people. First of all, I'm joined by Lauren Coates. And uh, Lauren is a licensed professional counselor and the owner of Rockwall Counseling and Wellness mm -hmm. and has been my friend for a long time. So- Long time. How long? 20, no. How old were you? 15 or 16, and 15 I'm 15 or 16, yeah. and so uh, I've like had Like 15 the, or 16 years. Yeah, yeah, so I've known Lauren for a long time, and uh, Lauren, I just wanna say how privileged we are to have you joining us today, and so we're honored to have you here, so thank you so much. Thank you. And we are also joined by some unbelievably talented, awesome, uh, incredible, why are y'all laughing about that? Uh, <laughs> sea lifers, and so uh, we're thankful for all of you being here, so we, we're, we're glad that you're here. And uh, we know that you're going to help us to process this today. And so, um, you know, in this series, we're talking about letting go of some of the things that make life more difficult, of some of the things that don't make life better, they don't make life easier, they don't make life more fun. And wouldn't we all agree that we want life to be better, we want life to be easier, and we want life to be more fun. And so um, if, if they don't make life those things, we want to drop them off. And so that's what we're talking about in this series. We're talking about dropping off things like anxiety and bitterness and people pleasing and shame. And today, today we want to talk about dropping off fear. We want to talk, talk about letting go of fear. And you know, when I think about fear, I, I guess I think about this picture. Um, it, every summer, it seems like I see this. When we go swimming, and I've, I've experienced this. I've got four kids and had this happen with every one of them. But when we go swimming and I see some uh, small child out on the ledge of the pool and their dad about four feet into the pool, holding out his arms, you know, coaxing them, saying, come on, jump, 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 and watching this little kid stand on the edge of the pool and just not being ready to go. And I, and I always think the same thing. I always think, oh, you're missing out on so much. You know, and so that's really... That's really what we're talking about tonight. And so, uh, Lauren, I'll start with you as we talk about this. Uh, what, what's so bad about fear? Well, I think, you know, what you just said, um, fear holds us back from so many things in life. Um, through working with clients, I've noticed, um, you know, there's all different types of fears. There's rational fears, there's irrational fears. Irrational fear um, is when you're worried about something that is not likely to happen, but it's keeping you from something that you'd like to do. So like growing out, going out in a group of people, um, getting on an airplane, um, enjoying motherhood. I, I remember as I was thinking about this, I remember when my six-year-old was a newborn, uh, it was the middle of the night and he had this really messed up eye. And I had convinced myself through Google that he had a <laughs> bacteria eating Flesh, like flesh wow. eating bacteria behind his eyeball. That I is sent, quite a diagnosis, <laughs> by I know, the way. Through Google, okay. Yeah. I sent Casey with him to the ER and he came back with pink eye drops. So mm. that is an irrational fear. And so um, rational fears are things like uh, the tornado sirens going off and you get in a tornado shelter. That's a rational fear. When it turns irrational and starts to impact your life is when later it's just barely raining and you can't stop checking the weather app and it starts to impact your day. So you would say the the big thing that makes it um, something that you want to move out of your life is just that it causes you to miss out on some things that might be important to you. Yeah, life. Um, you know, even even emotions that it causes you to miss out, you, you lose joy, right. um, happiness, presence, being able to just be present with people because you're uh, in fear over here in the back of your mind with Right. And even in conversation. Right. Well, as we as we just start our discussion tonight, there are a few things that I wanted us just to lay out about fear, just to be thinking about as, as we kind of process through what it means to let go of fear. And so there's really three things that I thought need to be said as we begin this discussion. First, the first thing is that fear can be helpful. And I think uh, we should acknowledge that, that there's, there's some fears that you ought to have. You know, if you're standing on the edge of a cliff, it's good to have a little bit of fear, like... Hey, if I get too close, I could, I could lose it here. Um, there's a reason you're afraid, you know? So if you're in a dangerous situation, you want to have some fear because that fear drives you to make a better decision. That fear drives you to safety. 
Um, the second thing that I think is really important for us to understand tonight is that um, God doesn't want us to live in fear. You know, God, the really, if, if you think through Scripture, Scripture is clear on that. And uh, somebody said this one time, and I remember it sticking it just stuck in my brain. They said, uh, fear that, that God uses the commandment to us, do not be afraid. Some version of it, fear not, do not be afraid, 365 times in the Bible. And he, he said that's one for every day of the week. And that's because it's important. You know, if you think about all the times, it seems like all the time an angel appears, all the time, um, you know, something crazy is about to happen. The, the first command out of God's mouth is do not be afraid. And so it, it just teaches, and I love what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control, which says to me that we don't want to live in fear. We, God, God doesn't want us to live in fear. God wants us to live with a sense of freedom from that. And then the third thing that I think is important for us to note as we talk about this is that um, letting go of fear doesn't mean that you never experience the emotion of fear. It means that you don't act out of that fear. Does that make sense? That, that there's a difference between you know, having an emotion that says, ooh, I'm a little bit afraid of this, and allowing yourself to be guided by that emotion, that somebody that, um, you know, when we say, hey, don't be, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's Lauren mentioned uh, flying, the fear of flying. That doesn't mean that you can't say, oh, this makes me a little uneasy. I, I have a, I don't feel completely comfortable. It means that when you let go of that fear, it means that you don't allow that emotion to stop you from action. And so with that in mind, I, I want us to talk about it a little bit. So What's a fear that you used to have that you no longer have? I used to be really scared of clowns when I was little. Um, my grandmother had this creepy clown statue <laughs> that was in it on the bookshelf, and I just thought that that clown that clown statue was going to come out and get me. And oh, and then I saw a movie I shouldn't have seen, like clown movie from outer space or something like That's that. A movie? Yeah. <laughs> killer that might, killer that clowns from outer space. title ever of a yeah. movie. It was it's not a great movie not oh, at yeah. all, but it was really scary and creepy and so oh, clowns. So when did you stop being afraid of clowns? Mm, I, I think probably when I was about 10 or 12, um, right in there, I I realized that, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. They're fine. They're not going to come get me. They're mostly really sweet people dressed up to make us laugh at birthday parties. So, right. yeah. Okay. Somebody else. Uh, I used to be afraid of being a good dad. Uh, when my, I discovered that my wife was pregnant, well, we discovered that together. Um, she was overcome with emotion and excitement. And I was overcome with this anxiety of, am I going to be a good dad? Um, but I've overcome that because I've just trusted uh, that the Lord will continue to mold me into the father that he wants me to be as I trust him uh, deeper and deeper in my relationship with him. Let me, let me just give you some things that I, I thought of, uh, some things that people are afraid of. And Lauren, you might add to this list from, from people that you've spoken with. Um, I, I wrote down something happening to their kids. People are afraid of that. People are afraid of public failure. People are afraid of unemployment. They'll, they're afraid that they'll never find the right spouse um, I, I think a lot of times people are afraid of a health crisis. They're afraid of being trapped, you know, just mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, I don't have any, any ways out here. Uh, people are afraid of being abandoned. Are, are there some others? I was going to say of? loneliness, but I think oh, abandoned yeah. kind of captures that idea as well, mm -hmm. loneliness. What about I you? think for, for me for? right now, and I don't even have perfect words for it because it's really recent that I'm kind of starting to figure out that I'm working through is that I'm going to go through my profession at work, being a spouse, being a dad, and not giving my absolute best swing at it. It's some area of my life. You know, we listen. Right. I, I'm the type of person, I listen to podcasts. I'm reading books. I'm around great leaders at work that are talking about leadership all the time. And there's so much info going in in so many different areas. Right. And I just fear I'm going to get down the road and look back and I never did anything with all of that info. I never mm. took all of those things into practice and, and did something with it. And I'm really like stuck in this fear area right now of I'm not doing anything at a high level. 
Do you feel like that fear paralyzes you in that spot? Yes, because I struggle. I think it's what I'm getting to is it's in every area of my life. So it's keeping me from doing anything in one area of my mm-hmm. life. Yeah, I would, I would, is that, does that fear drive you or does that fear? Immobilize you. It, it does both. It, I will get the really, <laughs> you know, well, I think that I can get really motivated at times, mm-hmm. but I'm trying, I'm really motivated in four areas instead of picking, this is where I'm really going to work for this season right. of my life. And because I get really motivated in all four, then it becomes paralyzing after a month, two months of working really, really hard at it because it's too much. And then right. I become paralyzed and I'm doing nothing for a couple of months. Right. Yeah, that's good. Thank you for sharing that. I would say that I definitely relate to that. Uh, I would say that my biggest fear is probably just, you know, failure at things that I'm passionate about. And uh, I've realized that because of that fear that, you know, maybe something might not go well that I'm leading or I might not get a job that I want, that I'm missing out on so many things because I'm so anxious and stressed out about that thing that I am scared of that, you know, I'm missing out on these things that, could be filling me with joy or even motivating me in those areas because of my fear. Um, And, you know, I think that just something that I've really had to kind of grasp, and I'm not even always the best at doing this in every situation, uh, is the fact that those fears are for a reason. And, you know, these failures are for a reason uh, because, you know, God is just always putting you in the best position for you to follow his plan. A failure at you know, a certain Sunday or something might be the difference between you getting a job that God didn't have planned for you. And, you know, and I just think that, you know, it's always important to just be willing to follow his plan and being able to submit yourself to that. So, so you mentioned anxiety is what, what fear that you have creates the most anxiety in you? Uh, I think just, you know, that fear of something not going well that I'm in charge of. Uh, You know, for example, uh, I lead worship services here on Sundays, and uh, there's times where I will be up late that night before and just not be able to fall asleep because I'm just so worried and I want so badly for the service to go very well that next morning. And so I end up, you know, setting myself up for failure anyway because I don't get any sleep, and that's never a good thing. So you're about to get married. Are there any fears associated with that? (laughs) Uh, You know, to be completely honest with you, there's not a whole lot. I mean, well, there should be. Let's create some. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Obviously, you know, finances are scary. You know, it's the first time that I'm getting, you know, you know, I'm being an adult here. Uh, You know, so I'm getting done with college and immediately kind of just jumping into the fire of being an adult, you know, trying to get a job, you know, being married, uh, you know, it's, it's, it can all be scary. And, you know, I would say finances are probably one of the things that are just like, it's kind of scary to trust God with those things because they're so pressing. uh, And, you know, obviously just, you know, adjusting to living with somebody else that, you know, you've never lived with before. And, you know, it's a little bit different living with, your wife than living with your two roommates at college, you know? So uh, yeah, that's I think probably going to be a little different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just adjusting to that, I would say is something that's, you know, maybe given me a little bit of anxiety for sure. Somebody else. What's a, what's your greatest fear? Um, so my fears are usually about, you know, wanting to keep things safe and controlled, which is impossible. Um, and so that will show up in, a variety of ways for me. So it could be a situation at work that I can't predict and plan out perfectly. And so I'm anxious about that meeting. Um, Since I've had, you know, our daughter, a lot of it's focused on her Mm -hmm. because I'm her mom and I'm worried all the time. A lot of that used to be focused on Joey. And then when we had Stella, I was like, I don't care about him as long as she's okay. (laughs) But, you know, (laughs) but that's just kind of, I mean, I've always been that way. But I think that for me and something I did, you know, when I was in counseling is like what Lauren was saying, I would play out the worst case scenarios. And I, st- I still have to do that now. And sometimes the worst case scenario is really scary. Um, and it's not to live in a negative place and assume horrible things are going to happen. But I think for me, sometimes I do have to let my brain go there a little bit and step out 
into the perspective I need to have of where is God in all this? Yeah. Because even in that situation, God is there. Yeah. And I've seen him there in horrible circumstances that I couldn't control. Right. And so that'll center me and that'll anchor me um, because I don't want to think of those things, but I can't really control it anyway. So I think that that's a good place for me to kind of go to when my brain is spiraling. And then also that other stuff like work stuff, I mean, it matters, but does it really matter that? No, it doesn't. And then I can chill out a little bit too. Right. So That's good. Somebody else. I guess for me, my greatest fear is being unloved. I'm kind of a people pleaser in that sense that I want to be good enough for everybody mm. and feel loved. So, How long have you had that fear? Do you remember? Most of my life, probably. Mm. Um, I was the kind of kid that I would rather take a beating than mm. have anybody say I'm disappointed in you. So, wow. what, do you, what do you do with that right now? What are you currently using to handle that? lots of prayer and just kind of surrender. God, I know that you're going to have to take care of this. Um, just knowing what's the rest of my story. I was like, I've seen God just be faithful and mm -hmm. that he's not ever going to leave me. Um, so as long as I have him, everything yeah. else is going to be okay, regardless of what happens. Yeah. So I think the most powerful thing that we have as believers and, you know, a lot of the clients I work with are not, um, is that, you know, the Bible it, it precedes psychology. It, it really lines up really well. I always say the Bible has the original cognitive behavioral therapy. It wasn't Freud or anybody else. Um, you know, the Bible says when we take our thoughts captive um, and we can be transformed, you know, through the renewal of our mind. And so I just like to remind people to constantly, I, I keep a list about myself, um, scripture that I know that is true about me, that um, God has said about myself. And so that's what I, you know, when it comes to people pleasing or any, anybody else's opinions and even failure, I, I, you know, would put in this is just, um, reminding yourself, what does, what does God say about me and my worth and, um, like keeping a, a running list, um, of even things that people have said about you. Yeah. Well, and you know, when you, when you think about scripturally, the way that the Bible talks about fear one of my favorite stories in the Bible is Matthew chapter 14, and it's when Jesus is asleep on the boat, you know, and there's this massive storm and water's coming in, and, and the disciples end up going to wake him up. And I, I, I've always got these pictures in my mind of how that story played out, that they're talking about it and arguing about it, who's going to do it, who's going to do it. But when they wake Jesus up in the middle of the night, I love his response. His response was, why are you so afraid? And then he said this, he said, where's your faith? And, and that's always been such an important tie for me to, to recognize that the way Jesus associated that was that fear and faith do not coexist. That if you have fear, there's, a, there's an issue with your faith. And that so, so when you increase your faith, you, you squeeze out the fear. And, um, you know, so I, I know that we've all got these issues. We've all got things that uh, just rise up in our lives. And, and my hope would be, that we would be encouraged and that people watching would be encouraged um, that in the midst of the fear, we've got to learn to, tur to turn to Jesus. We've got to learn to lift our eyes to God. I love what the psalmist said in Psalm 121. He says, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so, so in the midst of these fears, that we would learn to pray, that we would learn to turn to Scripture, that we would learn to put our trust in God, that we would learn to ask, hey, what's the worst thing that can happen here? And in the end, you know, the great news for us as believers is that we know we win in the end. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, if it, God makes all things good in the end, so if it's not good, it's not the end. And so we can have faith in that. So thank you guys so much for being willing to open up with us today and to share some things about this. Hopefully it's been an encouragement to people. And now we want to encourage you to have some great discussion in your group as you talk about fear. 